I'm with uh, Phil Salamon from the Lower uh, Alsis uh, Ambulance and I guess the Coronavirus Task Force in uh, Berks County. And uh, Phil, thanks very much for some time. Absolutely. We think we think of the um, ER workers, of course, and the doctors as those who are on the front lines and in very much uh, danger these days. But uh, you guys are as well. So when you pull up to somebody's door, you have a report that somebody's sick and maybe has a high fever. You go up to the door, and um, you got to have a little lump in your throat these days, right? As you approach that, I mean, some EMTs in New York City say they're terrified. Now you're not in New York City, but still, this uh -huh. has got to give you a pause as you uh, approach your calls. Absolutely, and we're taking uh, extraordinary steps from both the individual side of the, every organization to uh, the county as a whole to try to address that. There's a uh, very large amount of PPE shortage throughout the country, and we're doing whatever we can to conserve that PPE while still delivering um, appropriate patient care. We've had to adjust some of our payment model, or excuse me, our, our treatment models, uh, in order to reflect the changing nature of the condition itself. Um, one of the things that we've actually been asking is, is for people that are capable of going outside after they've called 911 to go outside and, and meet EMS outside so that there's less risk to the providers than entering somebody's property. Hmm. And anecdotally speaking, Phil, have you had any um, um, scary stories or has everybody kind of uh, been safe so far? Uh, EMS as a whole has seen a drop in the amount of 911 calls that we've had, um, but to that extent, there's been a definite increase in the severity of calls that people are calling 911 for. Um, that's information that's been present, that's been out there, and we've seen that uh, from across the state. You change the way you uh, approach some of these calls because you have the patients before they ever get to the hospital. For example, yeah. you about CPR or something like that. You have to yeah. have close contact with the patient. Yes, and actually one of the things that uh, I was asked by uh, one of the physicians at the hospital in a conference call this morning was to bring up the concept of hands-only CPR. And if you're unfamiliar with this, you, there's uh, references available uh, simply by Googling it on YouTube or, or searching it on YouTube or, or searching it through the American Heart Association. Um, the biggest spread of this disease is, is through uh, aerosol. So by doing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, if you've taken a CPR class you know, the last 15, 20 years, um, you putting your mouth out of uh, to somebody else's mouth is going to increase your risk of getting disease transmission. And they are sort of hammering home, not just as much from the provider side, but also from the lay receiver side as hands-only CPR being an appropriate approach. From the EMS side, there's, there's a lot of things that we're also doing as far as distancing ourselves from the patient. Now, obviously, with somebody that CPR, we don't really have that capability. Um, so we've, we've looked into different kinds of, of devices to isolate that person, uh, and then also changes in the procedure as to how we're going to and if we're going to transport that person, depending on what uh, results we have forming advanced life support on scene. Mm. You mentioned uh, supplies, PPE, and so forth. Do you have what you need on the ambulance corps, and if not, uh, why not? The biggest problem has been, and this is this goes to the people that you know are having problems finding toilet paper, or finding problems with hand sanitizer. Suddenly, there was a huge influx of healthcare providers that require PPE, and manufacturers uh, were exhausted immediately. Um, we have had a hard time getting it now. Our extension to the community asking for businesses that are not uh, needing it right now or, or closed right now to consider donating that PPE to us. Um, we have not seen, uh, we, we have about a little bit more than a two week supply based on the numbers that we have. Um, and that includes the donations that we have. And, and by no means am I pressing that we are uh, in a safe position right now. We're better than we were a week ago. Um, but the, the biggest influx that we are probably looking to see in Pennsylvania is gonna be sometime within the next two to three weeks. And we expect our call volume to skyrocket and that and uh, PPE stock level depleting rapidly. So this is when you're facing your local D-Day in the next two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, industry uh, exa uh, industry professionals across the board all agree that, that is going to be once Pennsylvania gets hit. And I I'm hoping that we're not going to be a second New York City, um, but there is the distinct possibility we could be. Yeah. Do you know if any guys who do what you do in Berks County are currently sick? 
Uh, as far as if they've been confirmed to have COVID-19, I'm not aware of any. I'd have to refer that question to the hospitals itself. I do know of several providers that have had to self-isolate, especially early on before we went into uh, basically putting PPE on continuously and, and having to reuse it, et cetera. Would you want people to uh, hesitate before dialing 911 where they might otherwise have done so if they had some kind of an injury or um, what would you tell people? Absolutely not. I mean, if somebody has some, so, so if, if, during this situation, if this is some, if you have a condition that you would have called your family doctor for, call your family doctor first. Um, there's a lot of different options that physician offices have opened. I know Tower Health and Penn State as well have uh, creating a telemedicine capabilities where we can keep these people at home and don't have to take them to the emergency room. Because obviously taking them to the emergency room, especially in an ambulance, that is an increased risk of somebody get, getting sick from uh, airborne pathogens in the ambulance, airborne pathogens in the hospital. Um, I mean, if there's, if you're not sure, call 911. Uh, but if you, the, the option is out there to be contacted with the primary care. Provider. All right. Um, our time is limited. Is there anything else you would want people in Berks County to know? Uh, one of the biggest things, and, and this is something I, 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 I've been sitting in the parking lot in Birdsboro for about the, the, the past hour here, and I've been documenting People that have been, here, I'll move that closer to the camera here. Uh, people that have been coming in with gloves, masks on, et cetera. And this is something that I, I really would hope that we can would hammer home here. Uh, people are getting a false sense of security that if they go out into the public right now with a mask on or gloves on, that they are protected. And without having the adequate knowledge of how these transmission occurs, especially what a concept that's called cross contamination. So I'm going to make, make an analogy here. I have a bowl of, of oh, hold on a second here. I have a, I have a bowl of spaghetti sauce. Uh, I take my glove hand, dip it into the bowl of spaghetti sauce. Now I have spaghetti sauce all over my hand. And I go around touching every other part in the, in the kitchen. That's cross-contamination. Every time you see, you know, red spaghetti sauce throughout the area, throughout your kitchen, that's them contaminated. And I, I've been watching in here, I've been looking down and, and watching as people were, were going about their business at this, this gas station and coming in with gloved hands, touching their face, touching uh, other equipment. So, for example, I, I go, I'm going to go out to, uh, to the grocery store and the gas station. I stop at the gas station. I have gloves on. I came from a clean, a non-contaminated home. Start putting in my PIN number on the gas station. Now my fingers are contaminated. So now I go pump my fuel, now my entire hand is contaminated. I get back into my car, I use the keys, I turn the radio, I change the air conditioner. I've contaminated all those, those parts of my car. I go to the grocery store, I'm touching produce. I like this apple, I don't like this apple. Now I've potentially exposed the produce to the cross contamination. Go to pay for my whatever I've purchased. And then now basically I go back home and now I've contaminated my entire home. Um, wearing gloves, wearing a mask, not a, 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 a an excuse for washing your hands. Washing your hands every 30 minutes. Biggest, uh, the, the single biggest method that people can use to prevent cross-contamination. Um, this is something that physicians have been trying to hammer home, something that the, excuse me, epidemiologists have been trying to hammer home, but wearing gloves in the community in and, in and of itself without proper hand washing is not going to prevent these transmission. Mm. You are not turned into an invulnerable Superman just because you walk out with a mask and gloves on. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, right. with, with my own personal my own personal experience, when I'm on the ambulance, I've gone through at least three to four sets of gloves, just simply from as soon as I'm done with patient care, now I have to call my report to the hospital, my radio up here. My glove is off before I'm even touching that radio. It's so close to my face, I can contaminate my face, I can contaminate my equipment. And... Uh, Without, with people having that false sense of security that simply wearing gloves is going to protect them. I mean, I, I have lists here of people that then went into their pocket, was on their, were on their phone. One individual was smoking a cigarette, well, several cigarettes, all while wearing the same set of gloves. I had one hope with one individual that was wearing a face mask. He took his gloves off and then with his clean hand touched the dirty part of the face mask. 
And mm. I was hoping that I was going to have my one success story. And I was getting ready to rush out to the parking lot and ask a couple questions. And yeah. no. Oh, well. All right. Yeah. Listen, I wish we had more time and maybe we'll touch base again in the near future. Phil Salomo, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate it.